Oh, is it a new opening? Nice. Should I look? Should I not look? I shouldn't look, right? Can't help it. <laughs> this doesn't necessarily mean anything. I mean, this just could be like imaginations of what could happen. It's like a fanfic, you know? Nice, I like it. What's the plan? This is all to fool Kimberly, I'm guessing. Do you remember when we first met? It seems we've changed places. Now I have the high ground, Anakin. Be so confident. Episode 39, Daydream. What a start. Kimberly, damn you! Right into the action. He lost his hat again. Not so fast, he's fallen. No, wait. It's much too dangerous to get close to the building. He doesn't care. This is when he feels most alive. That was a convincing performance. Yeah. It wasn't I knew it. a performance. I'm never a bit as angry as I sounded back there. I feel so worthless having to put on this stupid charade. But yeah, but they've really put them into a corner here. There's not much else they can do. That's what this whole thing is. It's like one giant mind game between everyone. I guess that is pretty convincing from Kimberly's perspective to think that Ed would willingly leave Winry with Scar. Yeah, what happened? Young girl, you have every right to pass judgment on me. Wow. Your arm. You'll die if we don't bandage it. Whoa. Henry. It's even better than I thought. I think... I think this is what my parents would have wanted. How do you feel right now if you're Scar? His life before, after all. There has to be a reason for that. Does that mean you're forgiving me? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't forgive your wanton murdering. It's all right. I won't cry. Didn't I promise that the next time I cried, they would be tears of joy? Oh, that's sweet. Listen, Scar. No matter what Winry says, I still want to beat you bloody and drag you down to the Rockbell family grave to pay your respects. Damn, Winry has some of the most touching scenes. The more I watch this show, the more one of the themes becomes clear to me, which is the idea of, like, what is humanity, right? And we've seen some really cynical takes about what humanity is and how terrible they are, and the weird part of that analysis is that it's all true on some level. What Envy says about humans is partly true, and the conflict that Hohenheim has about humans is partly true, but we also see characters who have experienced those very same things, that very same tragedy of human existence, not let it crush them or corrupt them, and instead make them better people. And I think Winry is a great example of that. Nobody would hate on Winry if she wanted to see Scar killed, but she's way better than that, and she has a spirit that's not corruptible. It's not as corruptible as other people. And so, like, that's the glimmer of hope. And and that's what you would hope other people do too, right? Like, in the face of the tragedy of existence and the terribleness of human nature, to still rise above it and not let it crush you. And to, like, be a positive influence, be a positive force, even in a small way. It has incredible ripple effects. And that's another theme of the show, right? It's like cycles of violence, but there's another side to that, which is cycles of goodness, let's say. At this point in the show, there's been so many actions that it's hard to even trace back where it all began, right? But, like, just this moment, for example, happens because Ed took compassion on Winry and didn't let her become a murderer. And who knows where that small action will lead. Right now, Scar, I'm guessing, will become an ally. And will also have the chance, in some small way, perhaps, for redemption and to do some great things. So for me, that's a really inspiring message. And it makes the tragedy of the show worth it. Much like life, right? Like much like the tiny glimmers of hope, like the little moments of greatness from people make terrible things about life more palatable too. Major Miles, wasn't it? Can I ask you something? What? Earlier you said I was one of your people. That's right. I'm a quarter I'm fallen. fallen on my grandfather's side. I wish we didn't have to meet like this, red-eyed brother of mine. How can you bring yourself to be part of the Amestrian military? <laughs> He's really a part of the Briggs military. My objective is to work from the inside to change how the people of this country view the people of Ishval. Interesting. I don't think that great a task will be easy to accomplish. Who knows how long it will take. But still, my mixed blood gives me a slight advantage at least. I'm an Ishvalan pebble tossed into the ocean of the Amestrian military. Maybe in time, the ripples I create will become great waves. And do you want to know what the most ironic part about it is? It was an Amestrian who set me on this path in the first place. Look at me. 
I'm Whoa. a festering wound of hatred born of the greatest fallen war. I am thankful that there is someone like you out there. Holy crap. That was such a great conversation. First of all, this guy just gets cooler and cooler. Like, I love what a deep thinker he is. And I love the scale of that, too. It's such a different way to think about it. Like, I think we often think in really grandiose terms of saving things, right? Like, if only I could make X change or something, you know, if only I had influence or something like that. But I think the way he localized that into just his small ripples is a really cool way of thinking about it because, you know, actually, I think most of us actually do have influence. It's just that we influence things that most directly connected to us. But that's also important. And I think that there's a cumulative effect. Like, if enough people adopted the mentality of, like, just being the best that you can be, as cliche as that sounds, and being a positive force in a small local way, the compounding effects of that worldwide or societal, societally wide or whatever might actually be great. It might not be necessary to have this huge top-down thing. And I think maybe one way to think about society and the world more broadly is that it is just the compound effects of everyone's behavior and everyone's actions and everyone's outlook. And I think what I'm saying probably sounds really idealistic, right? Like if only we could all change, right? It sounds sort of like a fantasy because human nature is what it is. But I think that holding that idea, however limited it is, is still more useful than not holding that idea, if that makes sense, by taking personal responsibility for ourselves as individuals in that way. And I suspect that that's actually the only real way for meaningful change. And I think it starts by people just having faith that it works and doing it. Because I don't think you can force human nature out of humans. I think the only way that it can be robust is for enough people to adopt it, but it starts locally and spreads out. You would hope, like you would hope that people like Winry influence other things in the broader community to adopt these more compassionate traits or more reasonable traits, let's call them, and create these small ripples and hope that it continues to ripple outward. And secondly, I'm shocked by Scar's reaction to that because he's really gone all the way. Like he's all the way there now, which is better than I expected from this conversation. Please don't take Scar as your prisoner. We need him. Yeah, we need him to decipher the Alka history texts. Scar is the only one who can make sense of it. Don't you see? Hmm. So you're the Alkahestry girl, huh? I have orders to bring you back to the fort. Me? But what do they want with me? Don't worry, you'll receive a warm welcome, I'm sure. I don't know if warm is the word I'd use. I think it might be best if we took you back to Fort Briggs to hide you from senior military staff. Hold on! Solid what reasoning. Are you, saying? you mean we're bringing that monster with us? We need to decipher those notes, right, Elric? There's not a damn thing I want that guy's help with. Nah, you want help. I heard all about it from General Armstrong. We know something's about to happen that will affect all of Amestris and its people. We need to know what the notes say. That's more important than anything else. I love this guy. I heard they're using the Rockbell girl as a hostage against you. If we act now, we can disgrace Kimberly and find some place to hide her where they can't touch her. So is this plan? Listen up, Scar. If you're willing to work with us, I'll postpone your judgment day. Well, it doesn't look like you're going to give me any other choice. Yes, I'll help you decode the notes. I have your word on that. You do, I swear on my Ishvalan blood. You can trust me, my red-eyed brother. We have a deal, then. My apologies, Miss Rockbell. You'll have to wait a while before we can punish your parents' killer. Fine. <laughs> right, I almost forgot about these two freaks of nature. Dispose of them. Please don't let him spit anymore. Kill them. No! A life is a life! What better reason do you need than that? <laughs> Showing us mercy, how adorable. You're, You're just, just a sentimental fool. We Shut didn't up. ask for your help, did we? <sighs> Look at All these right, bodies. Then. What kind of future can we have? If you're gonna kill us, do it! I don't understand. Don't you have families? Loved ones? Sure we do. But as soon as we got these bodies, they were all told that we were dead. And to them, we are. Don't you want to see them again? Even if we did, this is so bizarre. how could we go back to them like this? So you don't want to get your original bodies back then? You're content the way you are now, is that it? No, how could we be? No, they're, they're asking to die. Your bodies back. <laughs> There's your answer. I don't want to hear a bunch of fatalistic nonsense. Why not live? <laughs> And learn whether there's a chance of getting your bodies back. Therapy time with Al and Bebop and Rocksteady. Well, I'm going back. No matter how long it takes, I'm not giving up. Major. What is it? It's not good. A snowstorm. We can't complete a snowbound march with this equipment. We have no chance of reaching the fort. What do we do now? This is a mining town, isn't it? Why don't we just go into the underground tunnels? Hey, Yogi, being useful. What's wrong? I mean, this is a pretty large mine, right? 
So surely there's a tunnel that can take us beyond the mountains. Uh... It's amazing how Al was able to just convert those two soldiers. <laughs> Speaking of compassion, but he's also talking to himself a little bit, right? She can accompany us to the fort, of course. But when word gets out that she's missing, won't the Elric brothers be the first people they suspect? We can handle ourselves. Yeah, I hate to brag, but I've got a pretty smooth tongue, you know. No, this is Kimberly we're dealing with. He's very skeptical. Yeah, he's, he's very intelligent. He's be suspicious of whatever you tell him. Right. <sighs> That's why I gotta give her to Scar. I'm a hostage either way, so I might as well get to choose my captor. But he's a Fair mass point. murderer. Al's right. So is Kimberly. There's no reason for you to be risking your life. Don't you get it? It's time for you two to learn you don't have to do everything alone. <laughs> if you do anything to hurt her, I'll... I won't harm the girl. I keep my promises. I trust them. You realize if you do anything to obstruct us, the whole country could be destroyed, including your families and everyone you care about. <gasps> Wait, hold on. Just what are you saying? I don't understand. The central forces weren't told about any of this. Please, we need to know more. What's going on? Yeah, these are going to be some very in-the-know random soldiers, all of a sudden. You hang on to these for me. I'll see you back at the fort. You better. The storm will have Scar trapped too. We know he has to be somewhere in this town, sir. Since we're stuck here, we might as well start planning our next search. Kimberly's thinking. There isn't a single doctor who worked in Ishval that didn't know your parents' names. They did their duty without any regard to themselves. This is crazy that both Winry and Scar are hearing this. Murdering. This is something you must abide. How can I forgive the military for all that they've done? I said nothing about forgiveness. There is no forgiveness for wanton murder. Any good man must always condemn it. But still, you must abide it. You must sever the chain of hatred once and for all. If hatred and fear are allowed to prevail, the world will be swallowed by them. But if ultimate understanding can be reached, we may still have a chance to be saved from ourselves. That is my motivation. That's why I study alchemy. This is all great stuff for Scar. I like his mentor's measured philosophy on the whole thing. Like, forgiveness is not necessarily possible or even desirable, but you have to abide it. That's an interesting way to put it. And it seems like that's where Winry is. Like, she's not forgiving it necessarily. She still expects Scar to answer for his crimes, but she's able to abide it enough where she can actually help him when he's wounded. I think one way the teacher and the brother put it that I feel like is different from the way I experience it in life is I feel like often the solution seems to be like, hate people who are bad. You know, but I think there's a layer beyond that, which is doing what's necessary to protect yourself and people you care about, but also seeking real understanding and not letting hate cloud your judgment. Like oftentimes the response to evil is more evil, but I think what they're calling for is a breaking of that cycle. The brother also put it as something like we can be saved from ourselves, putting everyone in the same category. It's not like there's an, e an evil enemy. It's that the evil is a natural tendency that can arise in anybody, even people who are maybe on the right side of things. See a detailed map of the tunnels. Looks complicated. At this rate, we should make it over to the other side of the mountain a lot quicker than we had first thought. But what they don't know is that the routes change. And the only way out is kissing. Who's gonna kiss? The Philosopher's Stone is made from sacrificing people's lives. No one should be allowed to create something so awful. If His Imperial Highness found out how to make one, he wouldn't hesitate a moment to do it. He'd be willing to sacrifice any number of our people. Sounds like a great guy. I mean that General Armstrong's been summoned back to the Central Command Center. Troops sent from Central have begun invading Briggs in force. There's no doubt they're acting on the Crimson Alchemist's orders. Yeah, they've lost patience. Without General Armstrong there... A commander handpicked by Bradley will be posted in her place. What do we do about Winry? Hiding her and the others will be difficult. If they're not careful... They're we still got Miles, though. The enemy's clutches. And I wouldn't count out Armstrong just yet. I'll go tell them. Don't go underestimating the storm out there, kid. You'll freeze to death before you come anywhere close to reaching them. There is a way. Listen. Send someone who doesn't have a body. That storm won't freeze me to death. Very brave. <sighs> this is worse than I thought. It's hard to move, yeah. I can't see anything at all. What the? <laughs> what does this mean? Does this mean that he's running out of time? What was that? 
Was it my body? Yeah. <sighs> but how? <sighs> I guess a body just can't hold up with someone oh, else's no. soul being shoved inside of it. Damn it, I was wondering when this was gonna happen. A body that shouldn't have a soul in it. It's being rejected? Uh, does this mean my body is pulling on my soul? Stop it! Snap out of it! What a terrible time to find this out, too. I have to hurry. Yeah. Alphonse Elric. Edward Elric. And also, there's Von Hohenheim. Zumi Curtis. She's a possibility. That leaves one more. Isn't Roy Mustang also a sacrifice? And a new ending song, too. Anime, man. It's fun. I don't know what that is, and I think I don't want to know. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Damn it. So I got kind of lulled into a false sense of security. I had a feeling ever since Barry said that, that this would become a problem for Al, but it didn't happen for so long. I was like, maybe we won't have to deal with it, but now we have to deal with it. Al's in trouble. I really hope that Shingy's Alk history reveals an answer and a way for Al to get his body back and they live happily ever after. That's what's going to happen. That is what's happening. About the sacrifices, about the little pieces, this is like father's version of chess, I guess. I'm guessing that means Hohenheim also broke the taboo. The question for me is that where does Roy Mustang fit into that? Because he's been mentioned as a possible sacrifice or candidate or whatever, but we haven't really seen any evidence as to why. And maybe it's not even him. I mean, there's an empty space, right? Maybe there's something else I'm not even considering. This is yet another amazing episode. There's so much great character stuff for Winry and Scar and Miles and Al and sort of just Ed. <laughs> But there is some development, I guess, with him and Winry. Feels like the stars are starting to align, like the players are kind of assembled. We're just missing Roy, and we know Roy's gonna get involved because of the whole flower messaging system. And we're missing male Armstrong, Alex Lewis Armstrong, who I dearly miss. But yeah, so that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Yeah.